Once again, a uh, very good morning to all present. Indeed, a uh, great opportunity that you've given to me to be able to come before you to speak with regards to someone who many of us know, Moses. <coughs> I want to thank my host and hostess family right, uh, for putting me up in their place. Also, uh, there's Ting Kong Yo, Shirley, and me. And also for Chang Kong Meng and uh, Brother Wong Kim Tak yesterday, right, for bringing me around Utah that we can be able to visit the place and see the land of opportunity, right? Huh? Uh, land grow with milk and honey, right? Let's not give up on that place. Uh, it is a great uh, blessing to be able to see that place uh, booming and let us uh, get something done for the Lord in that area. Coming to my lesson, I'd like to ask you two or three questions. Have you ever been chosen to be the school captain or a school prefect or a class monitor? I'd like to know how do you carry out your responsibility? Were you able to work as a team? with the rest of the school prefects or with the other school uh, captains <coughs> that comes about. But today, what if God has chosen you to carry out His work here on earth? Would you give excuses? We like to look at a man called Moses, see his weakness, his strength, as well as probably learn some lessons from it. The life of Moses, I believe many of us are familiar. As I uh, make mention earlier, we will not look into it as in the <coughs> uh, Sunday school class. <coughs> but rather we want to look at it from a different angle to help us to see that this man Moses, his life can be divided into three sections of 40 years. The first 40 years, as has been read to us from the book of Acts chapter 7, <coughs> many of us probably think that uh, Moses will have to look in the Old Testament. But actually, the New Testament gives us a very good summary of their life, of his life rather. Now, the first 40 years, during that time, another new king has, <coughs> has arisen that didn't know the people of Israel. And this king was very much against the Jewish uh, race and wanted to have all the male babies killed. And during this time Moses was born, he takes a faithful, brave, courageous mother to be willing to hide a child of that age. Some of you may have heard of stories during the Japanese occupation. During the Japanese occupation, no families like to have babies because babies will give attention to the enemies in the sense that when they cry, the Japanese will know, oh, there are babies around, there are families around, right? So many of them have to hide their babies. So for Moses' mother to keep him for that number of times before taking up courage to let the baby be in the ark or, and let it flow down the river by God's providential care Pharaoh's daughter pick him up because he was good looking and uh, took care of him now no doubt he was trained in the palace his mother Moses' mother was the one who babysit him and teach him all the ways of the Jewish culture and custom. But at the same time in the palace, the Bible tells us in Acts chapter 7 verse 22, Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptian and was mighty in words and in deeds. Now remember this verse because later when we refer to Moses as a man, we find that he was trying to contradict what he was as a person. Right? So the first 40 years we find that uh, 
he was trained in the palace and he knew the customs and the culture of the Egyptian, right? Then we talk about the certain 40 years. The certain 40 years came about because when he was 40 years of age, he came out, saw the Egyptian and his brethren, there's a Hebrew, they were having some problems and he killed the Egyptian, right? The next day, his own brethren were quarreling and he was trying to solve the problem, but they said, that, are you going to kill me as you kill the Egyptian? Sometimes our sin that we have committed, nobody knows. Or at least we think nobody knows. We think God knows. But lo and behold, somebody knows. In this case, Moses thought that nobody knew about it and he could hide it, but no way. They knew about it. And because of that, he had to run into the land of Midian. Now in running to the land of Midian, which is on the uh, east side of Israel, he learned too much difficulties the terrain in that place. Now in learning the terrain in that place, it became useful for him to lead the children of Israel out of the Egyptian bodies to go into the promised land. Alright? That is God's way of preparing him. So sometimes in life, life may be difficult. Life may be a challenge. But all these challenges and difficulties, as you overcome, it gives you great pleasure and great fruits that you can be able to thank God that you have led me through this path. Our younger children may be like easy path to go in, right? Uh, one, one time I was uh, leading a group of young people to the campsite, right? Now in the campsite, when we go for jungle trekking, it's only a track. And many a time this track, you cannot walk two by two, you can walk one at a time. <coughs> There's one place that we went, a big tree has fallen probably a week ago or so. And so, when the children went to the trekking track, they came to the big tree, the fallen tree. They asked, how do I get over? During my time, there is no such question that how do I get over? <laughs> Just get over it, you know? But during these days, the younger children, they are not exposed to jungle trekking, not exposed to difficulty and challenges in life. They are stuck there. Right? But God had chosen a path and prepared Moses to lead the children yeah. into the promised land. And therefore we find that Moses knows the terrain and being a shepherd, alright, so as to speak, taking care of Jethro, his father-in-law's flock, he also understands that now you are going to talk to animals, come out, eat the pastures that I'm bringing you there, I'm going to feed you, I'm going to take care of you, I'm going to protect you from the wild animals, and then I'm going to bring you back. But how do we actually talk to animals like sheep? And train them to follow you as a shepherd. Right? And that is the other task that Moses has to undertake. So let us look in Acts chapter 7 and continue reading from verse 23. And when he was full 40 years, he came into his heart to visit the brethren, the children of Israel, and seeing one of them suffer wrong, he defended him and avenged him that was oppressed and smote the Egyptian. And for he was supposed, for he supposed his brethren would have understood how God by his hand would deliver them, but they understood not. And the next day he showed himself unto them as they strove and would have set them at one again, saying, Sirs, you are brethren, why do you wrong one another? Verse 27, And he said, He that did his neighbor wrong, thrust him away, saying, Who made you a ruler and a judge over us? Will you kill me as you did the Egyptian yesterday? Then fled Moses at this day, and was a stranger in the land of Midian, and he begat two sons. And when the forty years were expired, there appeared to him in the wilderness of Mount Sinai, an angel of the Lord in the flame of fire in a bush. When Moses saw it, he wondered at the sight, and as he drew near, he beheld it, and the voice of the Lord came unto him. This is where the next 40 years comes about and God met up with him. Now, I do not think any one of us here have reached 80 years old. 
But as I earlier discussed with uh, some, I said that when I was in India, in this place, uh, Shilong, there was a man, 80 years old, like the size of uh, Ting, Ting Kong Yo, uh, except that he has got no teeth, right? Left uh, two front teeth. But he speaks louder than me. Right? His preaching can wake you up. Right? <laughs> that is how powerful he was. And God has chosen this man at the right age of 80 to go back to his homeland to bring the children out of Israel. Out of Egypt into the promised land. But let us look at some of the excuses that Moses gave during this time. When God met up with him, in Exodus chapter 3 verse 11, maybe it's good to uh, turn to Exodus chapter 3 verse 11. <coughs> we are going to look at the excuses that he gave to God. When God uh, met up with him and says that, look, I'm going to bring you back to Egypt to lead the children out of Egypt, in verse 11, Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? Who am I? Have you ever made such a statement whereby some brethren ask, hey, Come, let's go and uh, get this done, let's go to see so and so. Say, Who am I? Huh? I don't think I can do it. I don't want to do it. It's always the case that we have brethren who are uh, feeling intimidated because of the past that I there's a hate. And Moses is no different from us. He's as human as we are. And then we come down to verse 13. When God speaks to him, then he says that, uh, verse 13 says, Moses said to God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, I shall say unto them, The God of your father has sent me unto you. And they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? There are times whereby we are lost over, isn't it? And especially in the area of evangelism, there are two things that we always uh, have problem with. Firstly, we don't have much time. Number two, there's always a fear when someone asks us a question we cannot answer. And that's the reason why many of us go back to evangelism. And so, likewise for Moses, he says, what am I going to say to them? I don't know. Right? Then let's go further. Chapter 4, verse 1. Moses answered and said, but behold, they will not believe me, nor listen unto my voice. For they will say, The Lord hath not appeared unto thee. Alright? What if they do not believe in me? In chapter 4 verse 10, after showing Moses the sign that God performed through him, the uh, hand from leprosy as snow became uh, normal again, from water to blood. In verse 10, the Bible says, Moses said unto the Lord, O oh my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither here before nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant, but I am slow of speech and of a slow tongue. Was Moses free? Was, wasn't it true that he was in fact in the palace, he was mighty in words and deeds? But here he says, no, I cannot. Have you ever spoken to someone who holds a managerial post and you ask him to do simple things, he says, oh, I cannot do it. Maybe it's too simple for them, right? Huh? <coughs> Speak to someone about Christ, give a track, it becomes too simple, right? That is what Moses said, oh, no, I'm not eloquent, I, I cannot do it. But God says, hello, you have your brother Aaron in there. You can't speak, never mind. I find someone for you to help you out. Then in verse 13, <coughs> the Bible says, And he said, O oh my Lord, send, I pray thee by the hand of him whom thou wilt send. Don't send me. It's not like Isaiah here might send me. Send somebody else. It's a very favorite phrase uh, in Frank Valley about a number of years back. Here am I, send him. <laughs> that is what we normally uh, tell people. But this is what Moses is trying to put for. But let me ask you some of us who are, what call, or who have uh, been working in the corporate world as well as in the company. Would you choose 
someone to give you excuses after excuses for a simple task that you give to them. Would we actually choose someone for a simple task when he keep on giving you excuses? I'm not eloquent, send somebody else, you know, all kinds of things they will tell you. And then you say, what? Have I employed the right person? <laughs> or maybe we are the one. Are we the one who give excuses when tasks have been given to us? After having seen these excuses of Moses, what changes will you make to take up challenges in life that God has granted to us or given us, given to us? What changes will you make to take up challenges in life that God has given to us? Brethren and friends, you know what verse 14 says in Exodus chapter 4? Let's read Exodus chapter 4. Chapter 4 verse 14. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses. And he said, Is not Aaron the Levite thy brother? I know that he can speak well. And also before he come forth to meet thee, and when he seeth thee, he will be glad in his heart. The anger of the Lord was kindled. Have you ever seen your own father getting angry? Rebuke? Ah. And you imagine God's anger on Moses at that time when he had given this uh, five to six excuses. Say, no, no, God, you send somebody else. God was angry. If God has chosen us in that sense of uh, the way he has uh, chosen Moses, but if he has chosen us to carry out what he had in mind, I want to tell you one thing. When you read the scriptures, you'll find that God says that I am with you always, even until the end of the world. If he promised us, he will go through with us thick and thin. He will see us through. He will see that we overcome the difficulty that we have. This is the assurance and promises of God. When we read the scriptures, each time when God makes an assurance, uh, uh, gives a promise, He makes sure that it is being fulfilled. Whether it be in Gideon, from 30,000 to 300 people, whether it be in the wall of Jericho, whether it be in any other cases that we have read in the scripture, God said He get it done in His way, in His own time. We need to put trust in Him. We need to obey Him. We need to be faithful to it. And Moses was giving all sorts of excuses until God was angry. Now, coming to this thought that we see, we want to look at Kampa, which I think is about 45 minutes from here. Right? It's not too far a distance. I remember during my school days, I ride motorbike from Nagar to Moa. Okay. Sometimes we preach in the morning, afternoon ride motorbike to Moa, preach there, come back, we have evening service. Robert Ong is here, I think he will remember those things. Right? Only later years when we have a car, then we go in, in the car. Right? But when we were younger, that's what we did. We trust in God, we trust in His promises. No doubt, Moa congregation did not really take off to be a congregation uh, at the time when we were young. But there are members now from Moa or the converts that are worshipping in Batupaha, uh, worshipping in Singapore, right? And we know that they are around. And we are thankful that that's what God started. So sometimes we never know. When the work in the coaching started, of course, uh, again, that time we don't have enough finances and uh, what for uh, people to help. There are those that, when I went back just uh, recently, about uh, two, three months back, I got to meet up with those young people at that time now have grown up to be uh, parents with children, right? They are helping out in the church. 